This is Canada, the nation of great big cold licks and other things. Home to almost 40 million people, Canada is a sparsely populated country. And after having seen how cold it gets in the winter, the fact that everyone is basically within 100 kilometers north of their southern border, I guess all makes sense now. But anyway, as a highly developed economy and the least populous member of the G7, what is Canada's economy like? Well, let's find out and welcome to the economy of Canada. Also, quick shout out, we are now on Instagram, so go and check Instagram and give us a follow. Link in description. Okay, so let's fly through some history. Canada's economy in its early days was based off the production and exportation of some core products, such as fish, fur, timber and wheat. Native peoples even hunted beavers and sold the fur to Europeans. And as parts of modern-day Canada were part of the British Empire, a lot of the produce had aligned with British and other European consumer demand. This created a west-to-east trade connection, as resources were sourced from inland and transported to ports in the east for exportation to the British. This period of economic development in Canada saw its economic ties grow deeply with the British. Industrialization didn't come until later, in the 19th and 20th centuries. Canada at the time was poorer than the US and the UK, and in contrast to Australia, a sister country in this point in history, Canada appeared to be economically behind. And it was significantly less influential, since it was home to only one tenth its modern day population back in the 1870s, which gives you an idea of just how much things have changed for Canada. For scale, if the UK itself had grown at the same rate as Canada since the 1870s, then it would today be home to a population almost the size of the USA. Anyway, part of Canada's economic success had been its ability to extract its natural resources to feed firstly the British Empire and then, from the 20th century, the USA's mega big boy economy down south somewhat similar to how Australia's been able to grow off the back of natural resource exports to the Chinese economy. Throughout the second half of the 20th century, Canada became deeply intertwined with Uncle Sam. Many agreements on trade were reached. Be it the Automotive Products Trade Agreement in 1965, a free trade agreement with the USA in 1989, and its expanded version in 1994, this time including Mexico, known as NAFTA. Since then, Canada's economy has seen impressive economic growth, partially driven by large influxes of immigrants to cater for some of its booming export industries. But like any good and stable economy, having a diverse set of trade partners is also important for Canada. And since the signing of NAFTA, a series of free trade agreements have come into force with Israel, Chile, Costa Rica, Peru, Colombia, South Korea, Ukraine, and almost the EU. It's a bit of a grey area, but the agreement is not 100% in force. Anyway, with all that said, what's Canada's economy like today? Today, Canada is home to the world's 8th largest economy, and has recently surpassed that of Italy. In per capita terms, that puts Canada more in line with the UK, France and Finland. It is, in every sense of the word, a high income economy. However, Canada, thanks to its natural resources and relatively small population, has a favourable position as one of the few developed world economies that is a net energy exporter. In particular, oil, as it's home to the fourth largest proven oil reserves in the world, and it also has the 15th largest proven gas reserves. But oil is where it's really at for Canada with the Alberta tar sands in the west of the country being extremely important. Natural resources aside though, Canada is of course home to a strong service-based economy, mostly centred in the Ontario region, around the country's largest city, Toronto. Toronto has become Canada's global city. It's where most multinational companies are headquartered in Canada, and is basically Canada's version of London or Paris. 
That's to say, Toronto is where a lot of Canadian GDP is centralized. So, overall, I think it's fair to say that Canada's economy is doing well, but not everything is perfect. What challenges is Canada to face in the coming decades? One, have you ever looked at house prices in Canada? Well, chances are, if you're watching this, many of you haven't, since YouTube tells me not many of you are Canadian. Well, if you did, you might see that they are crazy high. If you look at the price to income ratio, it is even higher than in the US, Germany, or the UK. Now, this is clearly a problem that many countries have, and Canada appears to be among the group that is experiencing the most severe impact. As much as the rising housing costs are a sign of a healthy growing economy, when price growth outpaces income growth at such a quick rate, this can also be detrimental to economic growth. Not only does it make the area less attractive for some inbound migrants seeking work in one of Canada's growing cities, but it also means that businesses will find their production costs rising at rates that may make them lose competitiveness in global markets. Not to mention, a lot of homegrown talent may decide to leave to other areas of the country where housing is more affordable, or possibly head south into the USA. The current housing affordability crisis is of course complex and requires a video of its own, but steps Canada can be taking is to densify areas of its cities through the changing of zoning rules and incentivize the construction of affordable housing in mixed-use transit-orientated neighborhoods, which may sound like a load of words just stuck together with no real meaning. But in reality, these types of neighborhoods would allow for Canada's cities to not only become more efficient, but also allow Canadians to reduce their fixed living expenses, as energy and transportation costs can fall. And with a rapidly growing population, Canada will need many more homes to provide for its future citizens. 2. Dirty, dirty fuels. Canada's economy is not exactly green. With large mining and energy extraction industries, it is probably a surprise to no one that a lot of CO2 emissions and environmental damage is caused as a result of getting that sweet Canadian ground to flow black gold. Just look at the global position Canada has in mining some of these key resources. The nation's oil and gas industries produce 27% of all Canada's carbon emissions. Now, of course, many of these resources are exported and can be considered emissions that belong to importing nations rather than Canada. But that said, over the next couple of decades, some of these key energy and mining industries are going to continue to face public pressure to be limited, reduced, and even closed. The EU, US, China, and the rest of the world will still need certain minerals and resources in the future. But with the push to be sustainable, Canada needs to make sure it moves with the times and develops new technologies as to maintain its market share to ensure the well-paid jobs that it has created over the years don't just remain in Canada, but also grow. As mentioned earlier, Canada has recently had a series of free trade agreements come into force. Naturally, the impacts of free trade agreements become more apparent over time, as business connections are strengthened. The additional bonus for Canada is the helping hand that these free trade agreements give in order to become less dependent on the USA's economy. Now, the US and Canada have a strong relationship on all levels. The motive behind diversification is not because Canada cannot trust the USA to be a reliable trading partner. Rather, it is to reduce Canada's risk to regional shocks and to increase competition in Canada's markets as well as the global market. Although many trade deals have been struck with other American nations that already have strong economic ties to the USA, like Colombia, Peru, and Chile, certain trade agreements like that with the European Union and the CPTPP, that's with a host of nations also in Asia, 
allow Canada's companies and consumers to benefit from different regional economic dynamics, which, if history has taught us a thing or two, can be really beneficial for Canada, and should help Canada address its diversification issue, as right now three quarters of its exports and half of its imports go to and come from the USA. So there you go, the economy of Canada. As a $2 trillion economy, it is definitely one worth talking about. And with the country experiencing strong population growth, there's nothing stopping the nation's economy from swelling in size a lot faster through the next couple of decades. In many ways, it reminds me about Australia's economy. Both are home to fast-growing populations that feed their growth, both have developed service-based economies, and both have large and influential mining and energy sectors that have allowed the country to ensure a reliable source of energy for their consumers and businesses. It's a strange mix of resource-dependent emerging economy coupled with a high-income developed service economy. Perhaps it's the best of both worlds. Thanks for watching. What problem do you think is the biggest for the Canadian economy? House prices, inequality, lack of warm summer days? Let me know in the description below. Otherwise, take care. Bye.